Hello, my name is Davis Baum. Welcome to my Bomb Ass Book Club. Today, we're going to be discussing a Billy Pilgrim and his unstucking of time. Billy Pilgrim and his unstucking of time is the main character and plotline of Kurt Vonnegut's novel, Slaughterhouse Five. This is the second video I've done of Kurt Vonnegut and it's back to back with the last video I've done of Kurt Vonnegut, so I must be losing my mind. Slaughterhouse Five is a confusing story. Here's two literary terms. There is the fabula to a story, which is the A to Z in a linear sense. Then there is the jugette to a story and the jugette is how the author rearranges the scenes and plot points of the fabula into whatever they'd like. So if the fabula is the A to Z and the jugette is the rearrangement, the jugette of Slaughterhouse-Five is <laughs> Billy Pilgrim, the main character of the story, is unstuck in time. What that means for the story is that you experience Billy Pilgrim's life Sometimes linearly and sometimes it jumps to that scene in his life and then goes to that one really fast and then this one and that one and then back to this one. It goes back to the linear one. It's confusing. But it leads to some really interesting themes on time. Slaughterhouse Five is a very interesting story and it has two major themes that I would say. It is an anti-war book and it has a great deal to do with time. It's also very funny. Speaking of it being an anti-war book, the novel opens up with a fictional writer about to write the story. When the writer is saying he's about to write an anti-war book to some director who's asking about it, the director responds, how about an anti-glacier book? The implication being that you are about as likely to stop war as you are at stopping glaciers. Not funny, haha, but funny, so. More importantly though, I wanna discuss the theme of time because I think it's a very interesting way that Kurt Vonnegut goes into time in this novel. Billy is unstuck, which means he experienced things presently and in the moment However, his present is back and forth all over the place and he relives his life over and over and over again, eternally and random sequences. One of the most peculiar moments that he relives is his interaction with the space aliens, the Tralfamadorians and their flying saucers. Now these aliens, the Tralfamadorians, they are omnitemporal. Omnitemporal means that they exist at all times simultaneously. Whereas Billy Pilgrim, despite being unstuck in time, exists in any particular moment in that moment. Interesting thought experiment. What happens when an omnitemporal being sees a linear being and vice versa? The omnitemporal being says that Billy looks like a conglomeration of all selves, past, present, future like a centipede of little baby legs moving up into old person legs. And we don't get much at Billy describing the Tralfamadorians, but there is one moment when the flying saucer is about to pick up Billy. He says that it appeared from nowhere all at once. It's hard to think about perceiving something that's omnitemporal from something that is linearly temporal. It's almost like just saying, how does a 3D being see a 4D being? It's hard, it's vague, it's complicated, and you kind of have to just understand it symbolically. But Let's talk about the implications of the omnitemporal being understanding you and what that means for your identity. The omnitemporal being sees Billy not as Billy in that moment, but Billy in all moments at once. Now, what does that mean for you? Are you you in any particular moment or are you the conglomeration of moments or are you some conceptual archetype of you being tested on throughout life? When I had first read this book, me and my roommate had a very long conversation on this exact topic. What is the implication on identity from an omnitemporal perspective? What is it? I would start by saying that you aren't you in your present moment inherently. By this I mean there's you when you're five years old, there's you when you're presently, and there's you when you're 90. And those are all different yous. Is any of those yous more you, less you, I would say they're all equally you. That's my perspective. But then that begs the question, how do you describe you? What is you? Because you can't just say, oh, I'm this height, I like these things, I do this, and this is who I am. Because that is subject to change. And if you lose those traits, are you no longer you? Or are you becoming who you truly are? You're you all along. But how do you describe you all along? I don't think it's as simple as say as you are you in entirety at all at once. Too vague, it's too complex, and there's too many holes in that logic. I think a better way to describe it might be first describe it mathematically. 
if you are a function or the line on the graph that you see, that is your life, let's say. I would argue that your identity is the derivative or the instantaneous rate of change in all those moments. You are the trend of your life, if you had to say it succinctly, rather than the function or entirety of your life at once itself. And again, to put it mathematically, if there is a function that describes your life, take the derivative of it. And I would argue that that derivative would be the conceptual you. Math isn't fun. So is there another way to talk about this? Let's pull out my handy dandy copy of the Bhagavad Gita. One of the supreme sources of Hindu Vedic literature and knowledge. In chapter two of the Bhagavad Gita, uh, verses 11 through 13, which I'm reading, I actually read a couple days ago. There is an eerily similar argument made by Lord Krishna to Arjuna um, that's eerily similar to the trial from the Dorians when they were talking to Billy. He says that there is no living nor dead, but rather you exist simultaneously in all states. To be a linear being and to understand the world, you know, like beads on a string, um, successively one after another, leads us to imagine the world in this present moment with all our material attachments exactly as it is, and this is what everything is. However, there is a conceptual version of things. What I said about the derivative, I would say the same thing about the conceptual you. There is a ideal archetypal version of the self that is tested on in the material world. And they exist and they are tested on simultaneously in all states and all imaginations, all at once forever. Just monkeys typing on a typewriter. But this is some really confusing stuff. And you know, maybe I'll do more videos on it. I feel like I've done a few videos on identity already, but it is a very interesting topic, especially if you're fan of mysticism um, or more elder conceptual knowledge or more abstract, abstract knowledge, identity is very important. But I hope I sounded logical enough there and I got everything I needed to say. Um, I think I did. But nonetheless, thank you guys for watching. Today we talked about Slaughterhouse 5 and a little bit of the Gita and a little tiny bit of math. I'm not a mathematician, but it's good to know. My name is Davis Baum. Thank you guys for watching. Always appreciated. If you liked what you liked, if you liked what you saw. I would go to the description, I would go into some of the social media, I'd follow my stuff there, check out my substack slash blog if you want to see a more in-depth analysis of what I'm saying or actually like kind of proofread and get everything I need to say out in a clear fashion. Check out that blog um, and thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it much. Love you much. Have a good one guys. Peace, peace.